incredible the willingness of people to try and get around the system come on the transcripts are in and what we've learned is that joe biden's son's lawyers working for hunter biden we're trying to slip this little thing in via what's called a diversion agreement in which hunter biden could have never been gone after for foreign illegal lobbying deals <laughs> are you kidding me so thank goodness there was someone intelligent reviewing this that would have been district judge mary ellen norica who said wait a second you know i gotta do a little due dil- diligence here I-, I need some time like i can't sign off on this can i even sign off on this so good for her i hope she's okay <laughs> I hope she's okay because, you know, there's going to be a lot of pressure on her right now saying, you know, what are you doing? What are you doing mucking up this whole process, right? You know, Hunter was supposed to get off on just that little slap on the wrist, a couple little tax charges, no big deal, despite the fact that, hey, the rest of the world would actually wind up in jail for what they're alleging he did and what he agreed he did. Unbelievable stuff. Plus, we're going to talk about Mitch McConnell. Plus, we get to talk about whether or not the president would pardon him. Oh, there's a lot to get into. It is great to see you all. Just a reminder, please make sure, if you have not already, subscribe to the show. Hit the bell. Hit the bell so that you know exactly when I'm here. Get those alerts. It really matters. Okay, shocking stuff. We know the plea deal now is off. Hunter Biden's lawyers are like, okay, he's not pleading to anything. Well, You see, what they were really trying to do here by way of this so-called diversion agreement, this diversion agreement was to get in a little something that, that would have actually offered him blanket immunity. Imagine that, blanket immunity. So that no one could ever go after him for a whole wide range of other things, including potentially illegal foreign lobbying. That's what's buried in there. And we know this because, you see, (laughs) the transcripts are out. And this is out. The agreement's out. I mean, I'm sort of shocked and amazed that people are so much of the belief that they're better than the system, right? I guess if you have the right lawyers and the right connections, heck, your dad's the president of the United States. You figure you can get away with this stuff. And I think he thinks he can get away with this stuff. And I think a lot of people think, well, you know, even if it comes down to him going to jail, his dad is just going to pardon him. So that's that. I mean, what kind of country do we live in where your connections matter more than anything else? I mean, it's just not right. America is America because this is still, still the land of opportunity where if you work hard and you continue to work hard, and you're smart, and you're diligent, and all those things, you get a chance at getting ahead. I mean, granted, you know, good luck helps too. But it shouldn't be because your daddy can pull the right strings and get the right lawyers and bury something in an agreement, in the diversion agreement that was all about dropping the gun charges, that, oh, in fact, he would have blanket immunity against a whole host of other things, including, of course, potential illegal foreign lobbying because isn't that what this is about potential foreign illegal lobbying and the bigger question the bigger question of course is what did the big guy know and that's going to be the real problem for the democrat party okay portions of the show are brought to you as always by legacy pm investments.com you can call them at 1-866-589-0560 if you're worried about your investment portfolio if you're worried about the economy right now if you're worried about inflation you should give these folks a call you're welcome to use my name of course very good friends of mine uh charles thornberg the ceo of the company thorngren comes on the show a a whole lot so uh, you may have seen him from time to time anyway they'll help you out take a look you can also buy and sell gold directly right there online. But this, ladies and gentlemen, is really something. A diversion agreement. So first of all, it was weird, right? Because they like put all these things into one. There were the tax charges, right? They, 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 he had evaded his taxes. I mean, this is like a lot of money. We're talking about between an estimated 1.5 to 
million dollars that he didn't pay to the IRS. I mean, who does that? Who does that? The guy in New Jersey, the Wall Street Journal did a story on it. He just, he had to go to a year and a day in jail because he had some auto shop in New Jersey and he was not paying his taxes. I mean, look, none of us like the IRS. Like, Don't get me wrong. And I don't think anybody needs to pay any tax that they shouldn't be paying. But in this particular case, he was really egregious about it. I don't even want to say, because they try and keep it clean, what some of the money was going to. But this is, this is bad. Of course, it's going to get played off as, oh, you know, oh, poor, poor guy, poor kid. You know, Joe Biden, he's been through so much. And this is just a personal matter. And there's no chance, no chance in H-E-double-L that the president would have ever been involved in any of this. This is just his son's own problem, right? Here is Corrine Jean-Pierre speaking today about it just being a personal matter. She wants to make that clear. Listen. Uh, I wanted to ask about the president's reaction to the legal developments yesterday and with the initial plea deal for his son appearing to fall apart. So look, uh, I'm really not going to say anything more than what I shared yesterday. This is a personal matter uh, for Hunter Biden. Uh, this is, uh, you know, a personal issue. And uh, as you know, this has been done in an independent way uh, by the Department of Justice. It has Independent? <laughs> you keep telling yourself that. Just like you keep telling yourself Bidenomics is working. 2.4% GDP growth, by the way, nothing to write home about. Anyway, Corinne Jean-Pierre is saying it's a personal matter and it's being handled in the most ethical way. Well, if it's being handled in the most ethical way, then why was this little thing sandwiched into that diversion agreement? Right? It's weird enough that they get the tax charges and the, you know, he's the, the, the gun thing, which normally comes with like a 10 year penalty. I mean, if you actually have a weapon and you don't report that you're addicted to drugs, et cetera, that's like, that's got some serious, serious problems associated with it. But they, they put all these things in there and then buried in the language is that <laughs> he's got blanket immunity. I mean, I don't think that's being handled in the best way. And by the way, that's just my personal opinion. But hey, go ask Gary Shapley, right, from the IRS. Go ask these whistleblowers that are testifying before the House Oversight Committee that, hey, this was not handled in the most proper way. In fact, they found it really peculiar because David Weiss, who was the attorney, prosecuting attorney, bringing all these charges forward, don't forget, he started on this under the Trump administration. They left him in place because they thought it would look kind of bad, right, if they like switched out the attorney. And so it was unusual, but they left him in. But they totally cut his legs out from under him because when he tried to bring charges forward, they were told they couldn't and they, they, they weren't moving forward on any of that. And that's what shocked the whistleblowers that have come forward. And that's what they have testified. Highly, highly unusual. And just to, to go back to, you know, why this is such a problem. It's a problem because it's not clear just exactly how Hunter Biden was making so much money all over the world given that he really had no skills and had a drug addiction, a whole bunch of other things. But, you know, they're going to play this off as it is just Republicans being mean. And the poor kid, <laughs> not a kid, older than me, not a kid, the poor son of Joe Biden, you know, they're, they're, these Republicans, these conservatives, they just won't let up. Here are the ladies on The View going on and on about exactly that issue being let off by Whoopi Goldberg, who, by the way, may not have a job anymore because, don't forget, ABC is owned by Disney. Disney CEO Bob Iger says he wants to get rid of ABC and those legacy TV businesses, so you may not have to watch her for long. That would be the good news. Here's this. Yeah. What bribery scheme? Yes. <laughs> but I, I'm sorry. I'm, I, it's always, it's so different every day. I mean, you know, they're either freaking out about Barbie or they're upset about, you know, uh, Budweiser beer and just Bud and Light. Just Bud Light. <laughs> Bud Light. Okay. No, no, no. Now, Bud Light's right. I'm sorry. You don't want the wrong thing to get out. Yeah. But I mean, what, what, what is, what is really happening here? I mean, well, how much punishment does Biden need? Because he won. 
and they lost. Well, that's the problem. I, they <laughs> keep seeing these indictments coming down from Trump, and they're like, humana, humana, what are we going to do? Let's turn it around and make it about him, about Biden, and say, take your eyes off of Trump, even though he's a criminal, and put your eyes on this guy instead. Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't think that that actually adds up. And you know why? <laughs> because if you really think through how this all came about, it wasn't the Republicans going and looking for some dirt on Hunter Biden. No, not like, you know, the other side did by actually employing opposition research firms to try and find dirt on Donald Trump. No, no, no. This actually came to the IRS because in the FBI, because there was an investigation into an international Porn ring. Amateur porn ring. I mean, I don't even like saying this stuff. I mean, I really don't. Like, who, who are these people, for goodness sakes? Talking about seedy. All right, so Hunter Biden's got something going on. You know what? Like in this international amateur ring. And so that is why the IRS and the FBI we're investigating it in the first place. And then, of course, all this other stuff came out, including his relationships with China, his relationships with Ukraine, his relationships allegedly with Romania. By the way, this is all alleged. I, I should be clear on that because, you know, I'm not like the Democrats who tried to insist and use used former professionals in the CIA and other agencies to come out against Donald Trump and just lie, like blatantly lie. This all needs to be proven out. This all needs to be proven out. Chuck Grassley has come forward, you know, with the FBI form, making these allegations, et cetera. But this is a real investigation, and we as Americans need to know the results of it because it's gotten serious enough that there are questions regarding exactly what kind of illegal foreign lobbying Hunter Biden might have been doing and participating in and whether or not his father had any kind of knowledge of it, whether his father had any kind of say in it. I mean, don't forget this one, this, this smoking gun text. Remember this? In which he said, you know what? I'm sitting here with my father. This is from like 2018. And we would like to know and understand why the commitment made has not been filled. Tell the director that I would like to resolve this now before it gets out of hand. And now he's tonight. And Z, if I get a call or a text from anyone involved in this other than you, Zhang, or the chairman, I will make certain that between the man sitting next to me and the very person he, uh, he knows and my ability to forget forever, hold a grudge, that you will regret not following my direction. Oh, what a guy he is, right? So now the big sort of first sentence in all of that is what you got to remember sitting here with my father and we would like to understand. We would like to understand. So that brings into question, of course, how much the president of the United States knew. Whether in fact there was a pay to play scheme, so to speak, going on. It's really not a personal matter as Karine Jean-Pierre would like to have you know. By the way, her semantics keep changing. We talked about that yesterday, right? Because at first it was like, oh, no, no. You know, the, the president had no idea, no idea about any of the, his son's business dealings. And now it's just the president was not involved in any of his son's business dealings. Well, I should hope not. But then again, why is it as the real deal reports that a real estate investor out of L.A. who had been a big donor to the Democrat campaign was in and out of the White House some 12 times, according to the reporters that were asking the questions there of Corinne Jean-Pierre at the White House. Why is it that this particular person bought Hunter Biden's art and then was in and out of the White House and now has a kind of plum commission job helping to protect America's image overseas. Is that pay to play? I mean, it's, it's fair game. Karine Jean-Pierre can't answer that question, of course. You know, she can't answer a whole lot of things. One of the, the other things that keeps coming up is, would the president choose to pardon his son in the event it looks like he might go to jail? What's the answer to that one? 
I mean, it's a fair question. I think people need to ask it. Quick reminder, if you have not subscribed, do me the favor of making sure that you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the bell, the whole shebang. We're live on Facebook right now. We are also live on Instagram, and I'm seeing your comments. It's great to see so many familiar people here. Again, Mike, David, Mark, good to see you all. But listen, guys, the pardon issue is a concern because America's just, we're just not built that way, right? Like we're not built on this idea that it's who you know. I mean, granted, hey, you hear me say the system feels really rigged sometimes, and I think it is rigged in many, many ways, but like we shouldn't start off with that premise. And for these lawyers of Hunter Biden to be burying in this agreement the idea that he gets full blanket immunity from ever being gone after for, for a whole range of other potential charges, including illegal lobbying. I mean, that's just taking it too far. So the president was asked about this today. I want you to listen. He finishes up his little speech and listen to the reporters and the questions they're asking. Listen, I'm sorry, the mainstream media can't ignore this one anymore. This is fair game. So thank you both. And as my, uh, my mother would say, God love you. Thanks. See you all. Ooh, he just walked right out of there. Kind of smirked. Doesn't want to have anything to do with them. Because that's the question, right? Would you pardon your son? I mean, I think it's going to get to that. <laughs> Bigger question is, can he pardon himself? I guess Kamala. Kamala, he's going to have to, he's going to have to hope that relationship stays strong with Kamala. She's never really liked him very much. Remember that, that debate way back when? That could come back to haunt him in a big way if, in fact, any of this that's being alleged by the House Oversight Committee is actually proven out, right? Well, could he pardon his son? It's a real question. And reporters asked Karine Jean-Pierre exactly. I'm sorry, she and I are in the same color today. What are the odds of that? Hmm, here she is. Let me go back to the first question of the briefing. I know you said not a lot's changed since yesterday and that it's a personal matter, but from a presidential perspective, is there any possibility that the president would end up pardoning his son? No. I just said no. I just answered. Go ahead. Go ahead. Woo. Getting a little testy there, huh? I just said no. Next question. Next question. Next question. So Biden doesn't take the question. She says no. We know that that job is all about lying. And we know Biden lies. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say it. The guy flat out lies. He's been lying his entire career. It's the reason why he had to drop out of the presidency somewhat 30 years ago, maybe longer when he tried to brag that he graduated top of his law school when he was like in the bottom 10, he's lied his entire career. That's why he didn't run for president. He dropped right out of the primary after that lie was exposed. He lies. And so I guess he just didn't want to be caught in a lie. But, you know, Karine Jean-Pierre, that's her job to lie. <laughs> you, you're, uh, you're judged in that particular job by how well you can lie. Sad, right? Anyway, impeachment is still in the works. There's lots of talk about whatever comes out of this investigation. And guess what? Here's the good news. Here's the good news. And I'm not saying this as a political partisan thing. I think it's good for America that we get to the bottom of this. Because I sure as heck hope that you don't have political families running around making money in a quid pro quo kind of way, such as what has been alleged with Hunter Biden. That's not who we are and should never be who we are. I mean, that is, you want to talk about not to pick on Latin America and banana republics, but that's what you see in the developing world, okay? Not in the United States of America, where we are supposed to be above board. We are supposed to have some ethics. So by all means, it is a good thing for this country that this be investigated. And if it so happens that it turns out the big guy knew a whole lot more than he's ever letting on, and maybe the big guy had a hand in this side business well, then the big guy is going to have to pay for it, right? And that's where the impeachment idea comes in. There was an expectation that Mitch McConnell was going to come forward with a little bit more on that. As you recall, it was just a disaster. I'll play it for you in just a minute. Um, he, he just kind of lost it, like started zoning out. People have said perhaps it was a mini stroke there on Capitol Hill when he went to speak to reporters. Well, he was... Up and about today, 
and says he's fine. Nothing. Nothing to see here. Give me a break. Here, watch. Walking so into the, the hall. Called to check on me. I told him I got sandbag. Oh, nice. How are you feeling now, sir? Uh, How are you feeling now? I'm fine. Have you seen a doctor? Are you going to Any see a doctor? Any idea what happened? Huh? Any idea what happened? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Nothing to see here. So he walks off. I, this is what happened yesterday. You see him just staring straight into the camera. This was incredibly awkward. It was incredibly difficult and it was incredibly concerning. I say that out of concern right now because he's not right. There is something wrong. And whether you want to blame it on the weather I realize that's popular to do, or whether you want to admit that maybe there's something else going on, I think it's important to, to understand. There are reports now that have come out today that he has fallen multiple times. So he is struggling. There was the, the time he fell just, what, last week at the Waldorf Astoria, and he hit his head. And that was obviously of concern, but it turns out he's fallen several times over the last year. And so this brings us ladies and gentlemen, to a very important issue, which is why is it that our politicians are continuing to get propped up even when they're not operating at full mental and physical capacity? I mean, whether it's Mitch McConnell, whether it's President Biden, who can't make it up the stairs of Air Force One, my gosh, who keeps losing his train of thought over and over and over again. I mean, he's had kind of those mini McConnell moments multiple times himself. Has he not? Or whether it's John Fetterman with his depression and his challenges, and yet they they keep putting them out there. They keep propping them up, just like Dianne Feinstein, who found herself in a very challenged situation. Today, she was voting, and all she had to do was say, I, but she didn't seem to understand what was going on. I want you to watch this clip here. Senator Feinstein. You, You can actually barely see her if you're watching this. Uh, live the video you can see she's in the green she's just right right above my shoulder here i'm pointing towards her we're going to go to a tighter shot of her in just a moment she starts talking and talking and talking all she's supposed to do is say i that's all and yet she just keeps talking and talking you can hear her there so what's what's really going on why doesn't she understand this and it funds maybe because she's 90 years old yeah just say i Okay, just, I, thank you. (laughs) Look, we need a new crew. We need a new crew on Capitol Hill. We've got a lot of older people there, Nancy Pelosi, another one of them. They've been there forever. It's their entire career. Somehow they've made money. Always perplexes me, but I guess, you know, given that you have a lot of inside information and, and, you, you are allowed to trade stocks. That blows me away. I just actually find that really pretty pathetic. Uh, they're, they're making money. And then, of course, there's the idea that, hey, you know, if you can't make money in the stock market, maybe you find other ways to make money. Maybe there's lobbying agreements. And if it ever gets in the way, hey, you know, we got the lawyers that can put forward a plea agreement to get you out of trouble. It's like the get out of jail free card. Until, fortunately, maybe one judge, like Mary Ellen Noriaka, actually looks at the thing and says, wait a second, I'm not supposed to just rubber stamp this, am I? We've got politicians that are too old. We've got politicians that are clearly, in my estimation, corrupt. And we've got a system that somehow just enables all of this. Where are our ethics? This is what we need. This is what we should have. And the idea that you're going to just throw those out the window for the sake of what, money? It's not okay. Not okay. Certainly not by me. And you know what I'm telling you? This is going to become a bigger and bigger and bigger issue. Thank goodness, District Judge Mary Ellen Noriaka asked, what if it is unconstitutional? I'm trying to exercise due deliverance and consideration to make sure we don't make a misstep. I cannot accept the plea agreement today. 
she said, because of her concerns that the parties were seemingly trying to link the tax plea agreement to resolving that felony gun charge. And now, today, we have learned that within that resolving of the felony gun charge, there was that little thing that was buried in there, the diversion agreement. A diversion agreement to give Hunter Biden blanket immunity for a whole wide range of other charges, including illegal foreign lobbying. Wow. Okay, so this is a big story. It's going to continue to get bigger. We are going to continue to stay on it because remember this, this is what we have, our word our reputation as our con- as a country. This is what separates us from the, uh, the, the banana republics that are willing to just trade based on, you know, whatever works for them in the moment. We can't allow it. We can't accept it. It is a good thing for America that we have judges that are willing to stand up to this sort of thing. I thank you all, of course, for being here. I encourage you to make sure that you subscribe to the channel, to make sure that you subscribe to my podcast on Apple iTunes. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, make sure you come over and you check us out on YouTube or check us out on Facebook. I'm on Instagram as well. It is always good to see all of you guys. Like I said, so many familiar and new faces. We're on it. I'll see you tomorrow.